Hey, all right, I'm just checking to make sure my connection is good. Uh, I think so, everything looks all right. Minimize that. Hey, welcome to Prittle Mondays. We are here to work on puzzles and riddles to make ourselves better at armchair treasure hunts. Hey, Jimmy Fast. So it's another Monday. Let's see if we can get better at armchair treasure hunts by working on puzzles and riddles. Starting you off right at the start. Hey, K-Pro, loud and clear. Okay, good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have too many audio problems only because it's just me. Uh, although, if anybody wants to join with voice chat, I have a Discord. You can join me in Discord. And so instead of sort of yelling at your screen or yelling at your phone when you have one of these answers, you can actually do it on Discord if you download the program. Discord is a similar program to Skype where you can uh, voice chat over the internet. Uh, before I go through all my, my beginner stuff, uh, we have a riddle here. Uh, you use a knife to slice my head and weep beside me when I'm dead, what am I? Uh, I don't know what that is. But um, the whole point of this program is trying to improve our lateral thinking or our outside the box thinking and make us better at armchair treasure hunts. K-Pro is a fan of Sudokus and logic puzzles. I'm going to go through some of those. K-Pro says, I will give you what I say. I like, how the heck did you get that? <laughs> Come on, it's not, it's not that difficult. And, I, and the, again, the reason I'm trying to do this is not only to get better to make it fun, but it's not really a talent, it's a skill. And that's why we're doing this all together, where by working through this together, over time, it, we will all get better at these things and be able to see things in a different angle where you might not have thought it before. That's just what that, that's the point of the thing where you and me, all of us can get better at this. So then we can f figure out these armchair treasure hunts, which have these clues that sometimes are difficult to figure out. But I think this, uh, I think it's more a skill than a talent. So skill just means you got to put the time in and to practice and figure it out. I see, I see a lot of people are saying onion scallion. You use a knife to cut my head, weep beside me when I'm dead. I, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Head is not on a person. Hmm. All right. Hey, for for K Pro, I'm gonna go over here. Let's see. Let's Google head. Synonym, syno. I don't think I spelled that right. Uh, maybe I did. Head cinnamon, synonyms. Because she doesn't think it's part of an onion. These will give me syn synonyms, but we're going to go. I'm going to need to type in head onion. Let's see what, let's see what we come up with. I have a feeling onion is the correct one. Mm, I'm not going to look up for a dictionary. I don't, I don't want to even look that up. A head of an onion, though. Isn't that, yeah, it's, it's, uh, isn't that an expression? A head of an onion? They, <laughs> we just started, Alan. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> we, just start, we just started going here, Alan. All right, head of an onion. That's, that's a term, isn't it? Head of... An onion. Yeah, where I, I'm, I'm guessing when an onion's grow in the ground, there's a stalk, and so they, they call the, the parts that you buy in the grocery store ahead of an onion. I'm pretty sure that's true. And this is, this is the thing with these things, K-Pro, is that we're trying to take existing words and sometimes use lesser used versions of these words, but those are the ones that you got to you know, use in these, whether it's riddles, puzzles, uh, word puzzles in particular, or these armchair treasure hunts who have clues and they use terms that are not the most common use these terms, but it's it's what they're there. Uh, I don't know if I want to use my example that I used in one of, one of my videos, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do it just to reinforce this point. Well, we're going to do that. We're going to do that a little later. And this is also related to where we have sort of our own thinking and our own 
sort of ideas of what things are and they can lead you down the wrong path, particularly with riddles. So the riddle I liked in, in the video, I've and I've done this one before, but I'll do it again in case anybody hasn't seen it or didn't see my video or hasn't heard this riddle before. I'm thinking of a four letter word and it ends in K and it means intercourse, a particular four letter word that ends in K and it means intercourse. I'm, I'm watching the chat. You start, it's not the word you're thinking of. <laughs> There's a particular four letter word that I'm thinking of. It ends in K and it means intercourse. So I'm gonna let you think about that for a while and I'm gonna watch the chat. So chat, you be nice. It's not that first word you're thinking of. There's another word that means intercourse. Four letter word ends in K. We're gonna finish off this one. You use a knife to slice my head and weep beside me when I'm dead. What am I? I I'm really thinking that's an onion, it's an onion. So who got it? That was Jimmy Fast. Jimmy Fast gave himself a cookie. All right, I'm, I'm gonna give you a cookie though. At, uh, da, 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 da. Jimmy Fast gets a cookie. Come on. Here we go. So you use a knife to slice my head and weep beside me when I'm dead. So you cut a knife, you cut an onion with a knife, makes you cry. That's the riddle. J. Scott says fire truck. Uh oh, did it? Was this the riddle white one? I can pull up the riddle white one. Am I a mode of transportation? Am I a peaceful dwelling or am I braided fiber used for catch and release? No matter what, anything you have can fit inside me with ease. Wow, it's a seven letter word. Oh, um. Okay, I see. I see good. Okay, I see decent four-letter words for my for my other word. Well, I'll I'll keep this one up here so that if you've already figured the other, the other one, you've got this one to work on. I'm thinking of a particular four-letter word. It ends in K and it means intercourse, and the word is talk. Intercourse is a term for talk. Now, but you might be thinking it's something else. <laughs> Inter versus inner. Okay, I don't know. I, actually, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to put that search into the <laughs> to Google. I'll let you Google that yourself, K Pro. I, I understand where you're going, but um, one of the terms for intercourse is talk, and this is an example, like I said, where. Sometimes you have your own preconceived ideas of what things should be, and so you're thinking that, and riddles kind of prey on that sometimes. And even when we've been doing some of these riddles before, they, you know, you lead you down one path, and that's not the correct path. <laughs> there's no cookies, there's no virtual cookies for trying K-Pro, sorry. But we've got another riddle here. These are, and this is my, uh, one of my favorite riddle website, RiddleWatt, they're hard, riddles and you generally are not able to sort of google search them to figure out the answer excuse me so we got am i a mode of transportation am i a peaceful dwelling or am i braided fiber used for catch and release no matter what anything you have can fit inside me with ease Braided fiber. Uh, I'm thinking used for catch and release, so some type of fishing line. Uh, it's it's going to be it's seven letters long, but it says it should be one word because if it's usually if it's two words, it tells you. Am I a peaceful dwelling or am I braided fiber used for catch and release? Am I a mode of transportation? Am I a peaceful dwelling or am I braided fiber used for catch and release? Maybe some women, what, it's, it's called braiding, right? The, the hairstyle when you're trying to put the hair. 
<laughs> Uli gave you some bacon. <laughs> Not as good as a cookie, though. Um, am I a mode of transportation? But I'm thinking the braided fiber used for catch and release. Are they not talking about fishing line? Are they talking about something else? A peaceful dwelling. Could be a, a church, synagogue, but that doesn't... Mosque, M-O-S-Q-U-E is six letters. No matter what, anything you have can fit inside me with ease. Am I a mode of transportation in my peaceful dwelling? All right, well, we got seven letters because we're... Somebody guessed fire truck if that was for something else. So that was that might have been for the other one. Uh, but we're going to look at the one the words that were... Wow, look at all the wrong words. Seven letters. No matter what, anything you have can fit inside me with ease. <laughs> no, it's, that's not it. <laughs> Jimmy Fast. And I'm not repeating it. <laughs> I was the one that introduced that <laughs> to Cynthia on, uh, on one of the AGK streams. I'm not repeating that. So work backwards so we don't go where they want our minds to go. No, you don't work backwards. Sideways. Sideways. All right, how about... I'll, I'm going to keep this riddle on the screen, but there's another one I wanted you, you guys to, to figure out. And this one, and this is related to Cal Lazar's had a, we sort of got into movie quotes two nights ago. And this riddle is actually in a movie. My, uh, my brother told me this one and I, this, and I'll admit that this riddle, I did not figure out myself. And this is an example of where you have to work sideways, Cape Pro. A man and his son get in a car accident. Both the man and the son are injured. The man is sent to one hospital. The son is sent to another hospital. The son at the hospital in the emergency room is then met by the surgeon. The surgeon says, I can't work on him. He's my son. My question to you is how is that possible? I'll repeat, I'll repeat the riddle because it's kind of a long one. A man and his son get in a car accident. Both the man and his son are injured. The man is sent to one hospital. The one, this one hospital is in one state. The son is sent to another hospital in another state. The son in the emergency room is then met by the doctor. The doctor there says, I can't work on him He's my son. How is this possible? Yes. Okay. Treasure Hunter got, got it first. Ha <laughs> ha. Treasure Hunter. So you guys got this quickly. Dang, you're, you're better than me. You are better than me. And I'll explain. No, it's not Stepson. Because if it was Stepson, the doctor, uh, who is guessing Stepson. Yes, J. Scott's there. Gender bias. And I'm going to pull up the word in a riddle, uh, the word in text. And everything about the text forces you to think masculine because it's a man and his son. The man is taking one, son taking the other one. The boy's taking the other one. The surgeon says, I can't work on him. He's my son. So you're, you're sort of beaten in the head with masculine, 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 masculine. And, I, and my brother was kind of, I, I got him kind of, I don't know, on edge because I was telling him there's some relationship between the doctor and the son, and this, but I can't quite get it because in, in my brain, I got pushed into the masculine, masculine, masculine. So I, Jay Scott there has got the idea that I was trying to push is that in this case, the riddle pushes you down towards this masculine. You don't even realize it, but the way it's worded. It's pushing you down towards this masculine area and you don't even realize it. And um, that's why I, I didn't get it. But you guys, you guys are good. Treasure Hunter got it. Jeremy Fast got it. You guys all got it. Sexist societies. Don't think it's women as doctors. I, I guess you could, you could say that, yes. When, when somebody says surgeon, they first think male before they think female. But it's... I. 
This is a, a riddle designed to when when the answer comes out and you don't get it, you're like, oh, I should have got it. And it's and this is one of those cases where uh, because I didn't get it, it's like, man, I, I should have got that. Because even I knew, because I've been trying to work on some of these rules to get, get better at these for armchair treasurance myself, trying to figure them out. It's like, oh, I wish I, I wish I'd got that one. Uh, I've got some, I've got some lateral think. I got some outside the box thinkers here in the room. Um, but this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to avoid getting ourselves put into these traps and try to try to get better at them. <laughs> All right, let's minimize that. Family step riddle together. Okay, holy. <laughs> uh, but see, I am a mode of transportation. Am I a peaceful dwelling or am I braided fiber used for catch and release? All right, I, I'm really not even coming up with anything that gets close to this. I'm hoping I have enough points or coins or whatever that I can get the first letter because if you have um, if you have enough points you can get like the first letter in the answer uh, is it over here Alan case guessing trailer uh, riddle unlock well I don't want to reveal the answer I thought they gave me like the first letter. Alan K is guessing trailer. Let me look at the f false answers. Man, there's a lot of wrong answers. Oh, trailer is in the list of incorrect guesses. I don't know if I don't know if you can see that, Alan K, but it's it's in the wrong answers. Am I a mode of transportation? Am I a peaceful dwelling? Okay, you're thinking like um, uh, an RV, a recreational vehicle. I can see where you're going with that. Cheat some of us like that. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't want to have just the answers handed to me. This is why I like this because it's not something you can easily figure out. But then, you know, you you work on it. You work on it. Worst case scenario, you do try to Google, but sometimes even then. Uh, there was one, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, where I actually gave people homework assignments, and I worked on it myself. And uh, I think it was Sledneck that, that figured it out. Uh, I, might be, I might be wrong with the person, but someone figured it And Huli did figure that one out also, where I gave you a homework assignment on that one because I couldn't figure it out. And even Googling it, I wasn't able to get it very quickly. Am I a mode of transportation? Am I a peaceful dwelling? Or am I braided fiber used for catch and release? No matter what... Anything you have can fit inside me with ease. What about if it's something like memory? How, how many letters are there in memory? M-E-M. -E -M. Or, okay. Not enough letters. Just six letters for memory. Am I, it's not, you know, something along treasure hunter of oh, <laughs> muscles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the answer to it, the one before something net zip line paracord hammock cast net. Okay. Pro, I would think that the hints are totally different that have one common bond. Well, hammock. I, I'm, I'm looking at Treasure Hunter's guess of hammock there. That one jumped out at me first. Although I don't know how that works for all the clues. All right, I'm just going to go ahead because you've got a whole bunch of answers. Paracord is eight letters. Hammock is seven letters. I'm going to try that one. Nope. Nope. Castanet is two words, but I'm going to go ahead and do that one. Nope. Treasure Hunter also, Treasure Hunter also gets zipline. I don't think that works for them. And J. Scott has filament, but that one is eight letters. We're looking for something with seven letters. 
Am I a mode of transportation? Am I a peaceful dwelling? Or am I braided fiber used for catch and release? All right, I think I'm, we're going to have to just move on. Um, if you want to continue to work on this one, you can continue to guess on this one. Uh, and then you can put the answer into the uh, into the comments after the after the stream. <clears throat> yeah, it's okay. It's all right, Jay Scott. I know yeah, it's too many letters, but it's all good. So, so riddles is one of those areas where they put you into different things. K Pro is a fan of logic, <laughs> and I'm, I know my head is in the way. Let me let me just. Whoop, not that one. There we go. Just take my head away for a second. K-Pro likes Sudokus and logic puzzles. So what is a Sudoku? Sudoku, you're you're given an, this little grid here with different numbers. Um, the numbers are, will always be 1 through 9. And every row, every column will be 1 through 9, and they will not be repeated. So there's be no repeat numbers in 1 through 9 in every row and every column. Also, all of the individual boxes, I'll call these like the tic-tac-toe boxes, each of these boxes will be one through nine and there will be no numbers repeated. So in order to solve these, you sort of use your logic. And let me see what we got here. Uh, I'm not planning to do the whole <laughs> Sudoku puzzle, but uh, just to give you an idea. Uh, let's see, two, two, Three, three. I kind of, when I do these, I kind of do these. All right, here's one. So in these three boxes here, so you, you already have a seven here. You have a seven here. That means for this box, uh, you cannot have a seven anywhere else on this row. You can't have a seven anywhere else on this one. But here we can have the seven here. And we know this is a fact because uh, the seven would have to be in one of these three boxes. And because these two are filled, then you put it there. Uh, J. Scott says I can put eight in the middle. Uh, I, it would have to be penciled in because the eight could be in this box or the eight could be in this box unless you have something else. Middle horizontal. Uh, let's see, eight... Oh, I see. It's definitely here. Yeah, okay. So you are you guys are good at these Sudokus because you can already tell, and I see where you're going with this, since the 8 can't be here, and since the 8 can't be over here, that means the 8 is either this box or this box, which means when you bring this back down, the only place that this 8 could be in this middle box is there. Uh, who is asking, do you start with the most filled line? It's how you start and begin can be up to you. I kind of like, I was looking at all the ones to see if there's the easy ones, and then I was looking at all the twos, and then I was looking at all the threes. I eventually got to the seven here. Uh, it looks like J. Scott and K. Pro could see that in the eights here, uh, because there was an eight, has to be either here or here. That means in this middle box, the eight can only be there. So what you're using is logic. You're using the information that you, you have avail available to you in order to fill out, figure out where all the numbers go. And this is kind of a popular one if you see people working on puzzles in uh, on the airplane. This is a common one you'll see either in the airplane magazines or stuff that people will take their pen out and they're filling. Or if they're if they're good, they, they put a, use it in pen, but if maybe they're not so good, they put pencil so they can cross it off later on. K-Pro says she goes in order from one to nine, trying to figure out all the numbers, then the small boxes. She loves these. Yes. Oh, and you even time yourself? <laughs> yeah, it's um I I don't I'm going to I'm going to kind of sound negative to this K-Pro, but uh, it's this is a good sort of mental exercise, but when we're trying to work on our wordplay and uh you know, increasing our vocabulary and trying in order to figure out these armchair treasure hunts, this is not the kind of puzzle that I want to do on the stream because it's you're using logic and I'm trying to sort of, which is a, which is a good thing. You know, it's good to get the, the mental exercise to figure these things out. Um, you know, if you have a quiet moment, like you're stuck on an airplane, like I was saying, you could take these, take them out from the magazine and you can start filling them in. That's good for that. But 
I'm trying to improve sort of the lateral outside the box thinking and I'm and I'm not so I'm I'm going for this just for Capro cuz Capro is awesome. <laughs> Capro is awesome, but you know, I'm not, I'm not going to finish off the rest of this or and I don't want to do these again because is this falls under the the use of logic, which is great, works the brain. You know, as we get older, we need to keep the brain active to figure out how to figure these things out. Um but that's a Sudoku. We're gonna we're gonna tr go on to a, another one of K Pro's favorites, which are logic puzzles. <clears throat> K Pro says the leaderboards required. I get more points that way, like your points on riddles. Uh, points. So do you have? You're like um, a member of a group or something where maybe everybody works on the same the same uh, the same Sudokus, and then you you all submit your times. Something like that. So then it creates leaderboards, and and I, I like the sort of the competitive aspect of that. I can see where it helps you. Mike is K Pro says Mike is the cipher guy. I'm the logic person. We debate away, we test each other. I get what you're saying, AJ. Okay, I appreciate you you, you understand where I'm coming from, <laughs> because I want to sort of work. I want to get better at sort of like my vocabulary, you know, synonyms, and that's where. After we do logic puzzles, I'm going to go to cryptic crosswords as an introduction because in my mind, even though I'm not good at cryptic crosswords at all, in my mind, it's the best puzzle to make us better for armchair treasure hunts, which tend to have that lateral thinking, taking a word where it might mean one thing usually, but it might be a, a lesser type of used word somewhere else. And that's the one where you need that to figure it out. <clears throat> so logic puzzles. This is, and I'm wrapping this into Sudoku, where, again, it's right in the, the term uh, logic, where you're taking the information that's provided to you, and you don't have to think laterally. You're sort of taking that information, and let's see how I can figure that out. And <clears throat> I guess this is another one of Kpro's uh, uh, favorite type of puzzles. I, I had never heard of these before until uh, Kpro mentioned them. Uh, but I can see, I can see where it's... Um, useful because again this is using the analytical mind in trying to take that information where you might have just just enough information to figure it out and that'll get you the answer so ignore okay i'm gonna bring my head up again because it's important that you can see me <laughs> there i am i'm back all right <clears throat> so each of these logic puzzles has a little backstory here we have martin is compiling a book of scientific essays. Each essay will have its own chapter in the book, and each will be a, by a different author. Help Martin determine which essays will appear in each chapter. So here they provide us a little box. We've got four chapters, we've got four different authors, and we've got subjects. And okay, I don't, I don't have to go sideways. I can read the ones down here. The same subjects are in the upper right and the lower left. Asteroids, dinosaurs, earthquakes, and space travel. And we're given a set of clues. Okay, thanks, K-Pro. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we'll, I'll be watching your show later on. Thanks for coming by. So here we're given a set of clues. Um, and with these clues, we should be able to figure out the, the different information. Where the, What we're trying to figure, ultimately, is what chapter goes with which author. And so we're going to be filling in, you fill in these boxes to figure it out. So let's see if, what information we have here. Uh, okay, for one, for I'm looking at number four. Doctor Orr's piece will appear one chapter before the article about earthquakes. Uh, how about this one? Start with number one. Doctor Vance's pieces will appear somewhere in the book after Doctor Kent's essay. So this information tells us Doctor Kent's will be before Doctor Vance. So that means Doctor Vance will definitely not be chapter one. So I'm clicking that once to tell me that Vance is definitely not chapter one because it appears after Dr. Kent's. The other, let's see, the other information, let's see. So that means Dr. Kent is definitely not chapter four. And that's because the information says it appears before, oh, I see I'm covered up a little bit. Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna go through this whole thing. Somewhere in the book, one chapter, Dr. Dan, it looks like I have to get rid of my, there we go. 
Dr. Thanks. <laughs> Kpro is coming up in half an hour and Cal Lazar is in half an hour. Let's see. Dr. Dean's piece is about dinosaurs. So Dean is about dinosaurs. So that means we I'm going to click this twice. And so now that I have the information that Dr. Dean is about dinosaurs, after clicking it twice, it automatically rules out the others, these other groups. So you go through these clues and you'll get the answer. And let's see. Now I want to do a riddle that, that um, I want to see if you guys can figure this out because I've been just sort of talking here for a while. <laughs> so this riddle. Oh, the um, I forgot to mention that the riddle that I said before with um, the doctor is the mother, that was in the movie Tin Cup. Uh, I hadn't realized that. Uh, my brother said that was what the movie was in. Tin Cup. I've, I've never seen that movie. All right. Next riddle. What's as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? What is as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? Tell me, tell me, tell me. What is as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? While you're thinking about that, we're going to go to cryptic crosswords. Yeah, it's a it's a different type of puzzle. Again, logical thinking. You're given clues. You figure them out. Uh, and I'm putting that in the same... Inf you're guessing cloud. What's as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? Cloud is not correct. So cryptic crosswords. Jimmy Fass is guessing sky. It is not sky. What is as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? You're thinking literally. Think laterally. Outside the box. What's as big as an elephant but weighs nothing? Cryptic crosswords. While you're thinking about that, I'm going to go over cryptic crosswords. Jimmy Fast, boom! An elephant's shadow. Nice. Jimmy Fast. Gets a cookie. So what? So let, just to review, what's as big as an elephant but weighs nothing is an elephant's shadow. I mean, that's the same size as an elephant. Yes, okay. If the, where the sun is, let's assume the sun's right over. It's the same size. I think it's a good it's a good riddle, and that was why I wanted to go over that one. <clears throat> Broken scale at the truck stop. <laughs> I like that, Jay Scott. <laughs> that is lateral thinking right there. A broken scale at the truck stop. <coughs> I like I like where your head is, Jay Scott. All right, cryptic crosswords. All right, you might be familiar with, and I'm going to call them American style crosswords because American style crosswords are, might be what you're more familiar with. You're given a clue. Usually, it's uh, a straight definition, uh, and the puzzle itself is kind of really close together where. You've got every single letter in the columns, which is just about every single letter um, in the rows. Cryptic crosswords, they don't usually have it that compact in the puzzle itself. And the riddles, the, <clears throat> the clues are a little bit different, but I want to go over them because it's one of those things where having wordplay, knowing different synonyms, and even just thinking laterally in, into a different way of figuring out, I, I think, and I'm not good at these, I'll, I'll admit from the start, because um, these are, for a couple of different reasons, uh, these are British, and so a lot of these are Britishisms, let's say, or if you're familiar with geography, they might have mentioning different lakes that are in the UK, or mountains that are in the UK that I'm not familiar with, so, and... So there's a little bit of a learning curve. How about cricket? You know, I, I don't know anything about the, the game of cricket. Um, but I'm bringing this up because I really think that for, for my end game, if, if I want to say that I had an end game, this is where I think it's the best puzzle, in addition to riddles, uh, the best puzzle 
to get us better at armchair treasure hunts because of the wordplay, because of the increasing of a vocabulary where these there are words that you don't normally use. Let's say even in an American style crossword, um, uh, oleo, O-L-E-O, is a common American style crossword word because it ends in a vowel, ends you know begins in a, with a vowel, ends in a vowel. It's put in there a lot. There's a um, uh, epi, E-P-E-E, -E. because E is such a common letter. It's uh, epi is not a common word in American style, in American language, but it's very popular because of its use of common letters, uh, including three E's in an American style crossword. There are similar words in cryptic crosswords that are important, that are commonly used over and over again. How do you, how do you get better at them? Well, you get to get better at them by, by doing them on and on. <clears throat> so cryptic crosswords, the clues that you see there uh, they tend to have either a definition side and a cryptic side. The definition side can either be at the beginning of the clue or it can be at the end of the clue, but there's always going to be a straight definition, usually a synonym of something in the clue. But there's also going to be a cryptic side, which is going to be the way that the puzzle setter sort of points you into the right direction to get the right answer. So, and I'm going to go over, because I, I reviewed this particular puzzle before, because again, I'm not good at these. I'm, I'm not telling you that I'm good at these. But I want to show you that it uses some of that wordplay to get the answers. The first one is one across. One across, the clue is phone teacher who may send in the clowns. And there's 10 letters. You can see it even highlights that there's 10 letters in the word. Uh, here, it uses what they call charades. And the definition is at the end. So, definition is at the end, charades. Okay. Um, who may send in the clowns? That is the definition part. The cryptic part, I'm, now I'm not sure if I got it right because it's a, charades is kind of a straightforward part. Phone teacher, and the answer is ringmaster. So you take the first two words, ring, teacher, and, the, and it's called charades because let's say you, um, if you're familiar with playing charades, you, you're given a, the guess of um, ringmaster. How do you get them to, to get the word ringmaster in charades? Well, you, you try to give them the different words without using the term ringmaster, you know, phone, teacher, where you're taking the word ring to mean phone, teacher meaning master. And the, the cryptic part, who may send in the clowns? The, the, okay, ringmaster would be the definition part there. I guess that's, that's the part it goes. Uh, another one I want to do is seven across. <clears throat> Clergymen dance so awkwardly. Um, this is an anagram. And the reason it's an anagram is because it has an indicator word, and the indicator word is awkwardly. If there's ever a word that's kind of like mixed up or stressed, or there's a there's a whole list, and again, this is part of the cryptic crosswords. You got to learn the um, the indicator words, but here the there's an indicator word awkwardly. Uh, the definition is that should be at the beginning. The definition is the, at the beginning. So we're looking for a seven letter word meaning clergyman, and with it being clergyman, the information that we got is that we have to anagram these two words: dance so. And if you add them up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's seven letters. So sometimes if you just figure out there's a, a couple of words that kind of make a weird clue, you add up the, the letters of these, these words, and if the letter's the same as the letters of the word that you're trying to get, that's what the answer is. So clergyman is the definition. We're looking for a seven-letter word and reveal the word deacons. Deacons is an anagram of dance, so. The next one I want to do is two down. So here we're already given some information because we got these other two. Two down, the clue is midday, no, almost one. Yep, who is Deacons? <clears throat> midday, no, almost one. It's a four letter word. And let's see, what was the, here it's a hidden word. 
So here we're practically given the whole information right there in the clue. No, almost one. Four letters. The definition is midday. And what's what's midday? Noon. But then how do you how do you get the noon from the cryptic part? Here we take the word no. We take almost the whole word of one. So no O N part of one, which is almost all of one, you get noon. Reveal word. Okay, maybe I'm doing the wrong one. Here we go. Reveal word, noon. So it's a form of wordplay, this sort of hidden word information. Sometimes it's information where the word starts at the end of one word in the clue and then ends at the beginning of the next word. That's a, a common one that you'll see that goes through there. I don't know why guys retract, <laughs> retract them. Yeah, noon's correct. There's nothing wrong with being right. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right, Treasure Hunter. It's, it's, uh, it's all good. So... In the future, I want to do these cryptic crosswords with you guys. And I want to for all of us to get better at these because I it tell tell me it are have you done cryptic crosswords before? Do you have you heard about them? Um because in my mind, this is the best way to get our vocabulary up, uh lateral thinking. Uh the the benefit is that other than armchair treasure hunts where we don't know any way how the clues are set up. There's a certain style and there's a certain way that the cryptic part can be shown, but it's usually a fixed amount of types of ways that they can they can trick you. It's all new to you, Huli? Well, it's these are very popular in the UK, but they're not popular in the United States. But in my mind, this is the best way to get us better at armchair treasure hunts, which is what I'm going for. So in the future, I'd like to go th through these one at a time. But uh, for today, I just wanted to introduce you to them. All right, let me see what, what else we got going here. All right, I've got one riddle that I wanted to see if you got, you could figure it out that I, I saw online. Forward, I'm heavy. We're going back to riddles now. I'll, I'll bring this one up. Forward, I'm heavy, but backwards, I'm not. What am I? Forwards, I'm heavy. Backwards, I'm not. Oh, yeah, I wanted to go over this one, too. Treasure Hunters has not heard of them, but Grandma had me look through crossword dictionaries for the Sunday paper crossword. <clears throat> crossword dictionaries, there's a similar thing for cryptic crosswords where they've got certain type of words. Never seen that type of puzzle. It's, like I said, it's not, not very popular in the United States. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming most of the people that are here in the United States, because right now it's the middle of the night <laughs> in the UK, which is the people that would be, use these a lot. So forwards I'm heavy, but backwards I'm not. What am I? I think Jimmy Fast has it. I was going to type it out. Let me type it out here. Forwards I'm heavy. Backwards, I'm not. So yes, forward is ton. Backwards, it's not. <laughs> Jimmy Fast gets another cookie. And I, I just realized I've, I've got this big beginner where warm water salt. So I, I was trying to... I'm going to go back to cryptic crosswords for just a second. One of the things they use are, is abbreviations. And you can take a single letter and it can mean multiple different things. Our favorite Forrest Fenn poem has this line in the poem. Oh, did I, did I type it out wrong? <laughs> okay, well, you know what, what I meant. Frontwards. Forward I'm heavy, but backwards I'm not. If, if I got that mixed up, you, you know what I was trying to go for. Give me a give me a little bit of credit that I was, <laughs> I was trying to tell you one thing and I'm trying to talk at the same time. I'm not perfect. Forrest Fenn, our favorite treasure hunt. Million dollar plus treasure chest hidden in the Rocky Mountains somewhere north of Santa Fe. Begin at where warm waters halt. 
how can cryptic crosswords help us where one of the things is abbreviations and you just take an S. What could S be as an abbreviation? Begin it, begin it where warm water salt. I, I, I believe Cal Lazar's brought this up like maybe a month or two ago. Backwards, okay. Um, S, begin it where warm waters halt. It halts at the letter S. S could be south. So does that mean there's some geologic, geographic, something out there that begins with south? Um, another one is the letter S looks like the number five. If I put up a five. Whoa, what are you doing there? Five. It looks like the number five. Is there something out there like five points or five canyons? Because uh, in cryptic crosswords, they take where a zero can often be an O. And a zero can often mean an O in, in cryptic crosswords. Uh, a one can often be an I because they look just because they look similar. So maybe there's something out there in the Rocky Mountains that um, begins with a five, like I would say, five points, five meeting things. Shell to cap begins the verb. Yes, something that's capitalized that begins with S, or, or oh, I see what you're saying, shout. Um, that there is, let me see if I can do this. Maybe there's something that begins with shout, or even... SH or SHA or SHAL. It could be any of those things. I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not messing with the poem. And okay, I understand you know where I'm coming from. Um, the other thing is that an S, it physically looks like a snake. There is a snake canyon uh, that is goes through Wyoming. Is that what it is? I'm not saying that's what it is. <laughs> that's where warm water salt. In an S that looks like, you know, this is a, this is a part of a shoal. Isn't that like a, something, Jimmy Fast says shoal. Isn't that something that's, uh, oh no, I'm thinking S-H-O-A-L. But yes, anything that cap, that's capitalized, that begins with an S, it could be. But I'm, I'm saying it also just looks like a snake. The S, the letter S itself looks like a snake. So you're just taking something. And would that something that a child could be? I don't, I don't know. I'm not saying that this is where one word is solved. I'm just saying, and I know you're, you're, at least I hope you understand what I'm, I'm going for. You take these cryptic crosswords has a couple of different angles where you might not have thought of these. You might have thought that something could be get capitalized with an S, but maybe not South. Um, maybe you're not thought it's, it's something that begins with a five because a five looks like an S. Uh, an S also looks like a snake. It <laughs> just teasing me. It's all good treasure hunter. Um, but this is where I'm saying I'm trying to take information where puzzles can help you, perhaps, in some of the armchair treasure hunts. Snake River. Yes, snake. I, I got it before you before you attracted it, Jimmy Fast. There's there might be a snake river, but I'm thinking, okay, I said Snake Canyon. I think I'm thinking of the um the daredevil that did the jump over Snake Canyon. That was probably what I was thinking of. That's Idaho. But yes, yeah, Snake River. That that's um there's a snake river that goes through Wyoming. Uh, where S, begin it where warm water salt is the S, the letter S. Um, just as an example of something that's from cryptic crosswords that perhaps can help us with armchair treasure hunts. That's where I was going with that. <clears throat> so like, yeah, forward, I'm heavy, backwards, or not. You got that. That was a ton. Okay, we got all that. And okay, cryptic crosswords, Sudoku's logic puzzles. All right, let's do some more. Let's do some more riddles before Calazar's comes up in 10 minutes. Let's do some more riddles. What do you say? <laughs> Evil Knievel. That's the S. That was where I... Oh, and it was over the Snake River. I always thought of... I guess for me, for me, because I remember how how deep it was, I always thought Snake Canyon. But that's got to make sense that the Snake River is at the bottom of the Snake Canyon. Uh, and that was in Idaho, I think. Cause the Snake River goes through both Idaho and Wyoming, I believe. All right. Let's do some more riddles. When can you add 2 to 11 and get 1 as the correct answer? 
when can you add 2 to 11 and get 1 as the correct answer? You love riddles the most, I like them too. I'm going to do riddles every single day. <laughs> every single day for Priddle Monday. At least some riddles because I think these are, these are the most fun. Uh, other than me just sit, sort of sitting there trying to figure out a Sudoku where there's not really the give and take. I, I like sort of trying to figure these out together. Um, the competitive part that K-Pro likes to do with their Sudokus, that's good too. Because that gives you, even if it's nothing but sort of useless um, internet points or a cookie, a pixelated cookie. Oh, some people are saying time, time, time. Oh, all right. What can you add 2 to 11 and get one as the answer. Time. Oh, on a clock. Nice. Nice. When you add two hours to 11 o'clock, you get one o'clock. Who got it first? All right, it might. this might be different on your screen, but Treasure Hunter is first on my screen. Treasure Hunter gets the cookie. Let's move on to another riddle before Kalazars comes up at the top of the hour. Until I am measured, I am not known. Yet how you miss me when I have flown. What am I? I have a feeling I know what this one is. Hours? Until I am measured, I am not known. Yet how you miss me when I have flown. I'm thinking this is almost like time again. Because <laughs> time flies. <laughs> I fly like a realized bourbon red. <laughs> Until I am measured, I am not known, yet how you miss me when I have flown. What am I? Hours? I, I'm thinking it's more like time. Yeah, Jimmy Fast thinks it's time. Everybody's guessing time. Fun. Until I am measured, I am not known, yet how you miss me when I have flown. Okay. I, I'm thinking it's a time again. It's kind of weird that... All right, well, they didn't say time in the, the other one. They just said when you get two hours to 11 o'clock. But I understood where you're coming from. Jimmy Fast has had too many cookies, so I'm going to move on to the next riddle. <laughs> I am something people love or hate. I change people's appearances and thoughts. If a person takes care of themselves, I will go up even higher. To some people, I will fool them. To others, I am a mystery. Some people might want to try and hide me, but I will show. No matter how hard people try, I will never go down. What am I? All right, I think I know this one. <laughs> I'll see if other buddies gets it. I am something people love or hate. I change people's appearances and thoughts. If a person takes care of themselves, I will go up even higher. I, I had an, an answer to a riddle. No, I don't think it's confidence, Huli. Uh, I think it's similar to an answer I had in, in one of our previous Priddle Mondays. It wasn't, the clue wasn't like this. The riddle wasn't like this. Think of the last part, the, the last sentence. No matter how hard people try, I will never go down. Indulgence. Ego? No, no. Man, you guys have a short memory. Come on, this was a riddle from, a, the answer to a riddle from either a week or two or three weeks ago. Think of that, and I think the, the best part is the last sentence. No matter how hard people try, I will never go down. I had a, a riddle before. Oh, I don't think I don't think it's ego. Of course, this could be just a case where I've got something in my mind and I'm stuck on it. There we go. I think it Tuli's got age. Remember I had one. I always go up, but I never go down. Everybody has one. I have three letters. So the, it's not the same riddle, but I'm thinking the answer is the same. I think it's age. Now, I could be now I could be wrong. <laughs> See if I'm right or wrong. Ah, it's age. Huli gets cookie. Cookie for Huli. <clears throat> I reach for the sky, but clutch to the ground. Sometimes I leave, but I am always around. What am I? I reach for the sky, but clutch to the ground. Sometimes I leave, but I am always around. I think I have an idea. Yeah, Huli got it right. I reach for the sky, but clutch to the ground. Sometimes I leave, but I am always around. 
I'm thinking shadow, but I'm, I'll admit I'm not, uh, I'm not tied to that very, that's a tentative guess. <laughs> like you like to put a question mark. Tree, I reach for the sky, but clutch to the ground. Sometimes I leave. Oh, it's that leave. Sometimes I leave like leaf, but I am always around. Ooh, I like that Jimmy Fast. I reach for the sky, but clutch to the ground. Sometimes I leave, but I'm always around. I don't like the I am always around, how that works, but I like everything else with the tree. I'll, I'll give it another 10 seconds. If anybody else has a guess. I reach for the sky, but clutch to the ground. Sometimes I leave, but I'm always around. I'm, I'm thinking tree. I, I think Jimmy Fast is better than Shadow. Ah, Jimmy Fast got it. Cookie for Jimmy. That's good. Three playing cards in a row. Tree trunks are round. But I'm always a round. Ah, they both these, yeah. Who is guessing that trick? Because trunks have a round trunk. But I'm always a round. Okay. I, okay, that makes me feel better that every part of the riddle worked out. You can see that, yes. Three playing cards in a row. Can you name them with these clues? There is a two to the right of a king. A diamond will be found to the left of a spade. An ace is to the left of a heart. A heart is to the left of the spade. Now identify all three cards. I've had it. We I did this before where I start setting up a, an Excel spreadsheet or something <clears throat> to figure it out. And then it was a matter of it was a much simpler answer. It's got to be a, a simple answer. Three playing cards in a row. <laughs> Fingers are fast. For treasure hunter. Can you name our three playing cards? Two to the right of a king. A diamond we found to the left of a spade. An ace to the left of a heart. A heart is to the left of a spade. This almost sounds like one of those logic puzzles we were just doing. <laughs> An ace is to the left of a heart. A heart is to the left of a spade. Now identify all three cards. <laughs> That's funny treasure, huh? Oh, goodness. Three playing cards in a row. It's got to be something simple. It's not a, it can't be a logic thing. Three playing cards in a row. I'm, I'm having trouble trying to figure it out, and I'm not going to start a spreadsheet to figure this out because it's got to be simple. There's a two to the right of a king, a diamond we found to the left of a spade, an ace to the left of a heart, a heart to the left of a spade. We're given hearts, diamonds, spades, no clubs. You say ace, two, and king, J. Scott. There's a two to the right of a king. But don't you have to also have the suits? Is it an ace of something, a two of something, and a king of something? Or am I... I don't know. I, I need more... I'll give you the answer, J. Scott, but I need you to sort of show your work. Because <laughs> I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing how I came up with ace, two, and king. Ace, two, and king. Your J. Scott is thinking. Ace is to the left of a heart. I'm not seeing. I'll give you the answer. I'm going to show the answer. And it's yours. It's yours, J. Scott. If, if you're correct, it's an ace, two, and king. Ace of diamonds, king of hearts, and two of spades. Well, now I need to look, now I need to go back again. There's a two 
to the right of a king. A diamond will be found left of a spade. An ace to the left of a heart. A heart to the left of a spade. So it was kind of a logic thing. Ace, two, and king. Hey, you're the only one that, that you were even half correct. J. Scott, so you get a cookie. <laughs> a cookie for J. Scott. Because I didn't, I didn't have any clue. It, it's a, it looks like it's kind of a logical kind of thing. You're, you actually, if you took like pieces of paper and you like move them left to the right, I guess that's how you figure it out. But I was not thinking that's what they were going to do for us for a riddle. Hey, it's the top of the hour. You know what that means. Mm. Go check out Cal Lazar's. They're doing something on the Forest Fen treasure hunt. Everybody have a good evening. I'll see you next Monday. <laughs>